Good evening, everybody, and good evening, Cagliati. Welcome to the studio this evening. Indeed, you're here at the beginning. And today, I seem to be already at the beginning, which makes a change. I've usually forgotten something like lights or glasses or something. And Fluffy Twiglet as well. Good evening to you. So, put my glove on. Hmm. And I know, now I'm ready to start. I've got my knife. It's reflecting the lights in a really sort of odd way. Um, the blade is um, very slightly hollow ground, so it's slightly the, the sharp edge uh, that way. A sharp edge is very slightly hollow ground, um, and just as I was moving it like that, you you got a really sort of odd looking shape. You've got everything done, you've finished off your coding and you've done all your school work so you're ready to kick back, relax and watch me not cut myself with a very sharp knife. <laughs> More caving indeed. I did think about changing the stream title on purpose but I decided I'd leave it as it is. Just for the fun of it. Um, okay. Well, I know this head needs to come out a bit down there. This whole body needs to be slimmer, sort of, at least down here. I need some space to carve a little bit. Uh, I need a little bit more space to carve the tail, I think, although it could stay exactly as it is. And, of course, we've got this side to, to do a bit of shaping of, but in the meantime... One sharp knife, one block of wood. Let's put the two together. Uh, no, I don't intend to do that. <laughs> oh, you wouldn't have liked it when I was giving blood then. Uh, I used to give plasma. And that involved... Um, when I first started... Actually, I used to give black, white blood cells. And that was two tubes when you started, when I first started. Uh, later came to one, but uh, two, two big large bar needles, one in each arm. Blood coming out, and then blood going back in. Uh, that would have probably um, been quite fun for you, Cagliati. Never bothered me. <laughs> 99 pints of blood I gave over the, uh, over the time that I was doing it. which in UK terms is uh, 12, well, not quite 12 and a half gallons. In US terms, it's quite a bit more. <laughs> oh, I did, I've, yeah. When I gave blood, the needles never bothered me. It's the anemia check that they do at the, f at the start. Where they basically just jab your thumb with a lance. That hurt. The rest, no, it didn't bother me. And I know somebody that has um, diabetes and has to check their blood sugar on a regular basis by jabbing their thumb. Blech. I flipped the camera again. No, it's exactly as it was last night at the end of the stream, Fluffy Twiglet. I haven't changed it. Um, I can modify it. In fact, you probably want zooming out a little. Yeah. I'm sitting about. Let's just put this more in the centre. I don't know if I need to zoom that out a little bit. Is it a bit too close, do you think? But uh, uh. 
Well, I am definitely of the idea that you won't get to see any blood tonight. I definitely subscribe to that idea. Well, I half suspect half the people are watching, and that's what they're watching for, but <laughs> not if I've done everything right, you don't. And for those people that are watching that don't know, that's why I'm wearing the glove. Now, the glove is a, it's got Teflon fibres worn into it, so that it resists the uh, the knife if I um, slice, try and slice myself. Accidentally, that is. The only problem with knife carving um, that I'm going to have is I used my left thumb quite a bit on the blade, as you saw, or as you can see. And it's a relatively thin blade top uh, and I'm going to make my thumb sore if I'm not careful so um, after a couple of well after a few days of uh, carving like this with a knife I may have to do something else for a couple of days so just be warned that um, uh, you know at the weekend or after the weekend I may I may switch to something else for a couple of days just to let my thumb recover Hey, we've got baby tears as well. Good evening. Yeah. Apart from the needles, the rest, well, needles don't bother me. Blood, well, as long as it's not mine. Indeed. And now I can't carve up an image of you either. I'm going to be hard pressed doing a, a cat. I do not know what I'm doing in respect to this. I'm just doing whatever it looks or feels like I ought to do. I have to wait and see whether it's uh, the right thing. No, I, I, I personally have a low pain threshold, like when I go to the dentist. He doesn't even bother asking me these days if, well, actually I'm quite lucky. I haven't had any dental work done for a long time. But um, if I do, he doesn't bother asking me these days if I want anaesthetic. I just get it. Um... Now this is where, if I was going to make a mistake, this is where it would be as I'm holding this. In theory I can't make contact, but theory and practice are different things. If I slipped a little bit, I am in control of a knife. I'm not likely to do it at all. But this is where accidents might happen if I was distracted by something. Which is why while I'm doing this, I'm, when I'm using the knife, I'm not looking at chat. I can talk because I'm looking, I'm watching what I'm doing, 
but uh, I won't be reading chat at the same time as I'm actually using the knife. You might be surprised. Um, yeah. I can't remember Kylie Art. Are you from the UK? Um, you might actually be surprised um, whether it would bother you or not in a surgical situation. But if you're from the UK, you'll of course have seen of, I don't know if you've actually watched, Doc Martin. Uh, if you're not, he's. Um, it's a television series about um, quite a, an eminent surgeon, shall we say, who suddenly didn't like the sight of blood, made him pass out. Of course, he couldn't be a surgeon anymore, so he's now a, a doctor. This is fiction, this is. Um, he's now a doctor in a fishing village, and uh, he's quite a... An interesting character, shall we say. Okay, when I... I'm just thinking to myself now at this stage, when I... When I get close to finishing uh, this, I actually have two choices as to whether to uh, to do things like sand it out um, so everything goes smooth, or whether to actually leave all the tooling marks in, you know, like the cuts here. And I'm kind of minded to leave the cuts in. Well, it will mean on, on areas like this, though, which is uh, has been rough cut, um, I'll actually have to shave the surface in order to make it nice and shiny like that <laughs> okay I did my cooking before I started the stream finished my tea and then came on the stream uh, you have very shaky hands. Mm. Uh, in some ways, that's like everything else, so that's practice. Um, and one of the interesting things with things like shaky hands, if you stop trying to control them and relax, they often will um, go less shaky. Weird phenomenon that. I've got a, there's no pattern for this. I'm not using any reference pictures. This is purely from imagination. The original was drawn, as I mentioned yesterday, from Junior being laid just over the way there in that sort of pose and I sort of just roughly sketched out on the, the block of wood but from there on in this is all imagination so I don't actually know what this is going to look like I am la I'm laughing at all the people that's probably cringing if you've not seen me carve before uh, carve with the uh, the knife um, all the people are probably cringing at the way I'm cutting this at the moment <laughs>
So I will just be dotting around. I'm not, uh, I'm not specifically carving any particular features in at the moment, other than remembering that the ears are there. It's just all about getting sort of a body shape of some kind. Interestingly, just um, to, to mention it, you see the different colours of, of wood. It's not what show up quite so well on the camera, but you can see the very light wood here and the dark wood here. That's just the wood itself, just aging in air and, and sunlight or daylight. Um, and uh, as I cut it, it's going white again, uh, which is the underlying wood. So the top surface of the wood is a bit harder than uh, than the underneath. Um, yeah, it got dark really quickly. Uh, I, I um, when I'm painting, I, I well the other light that I used to have, um, I used to have over the top. Um, even during um, the day most of the time and this hopefully will be uh, good enough I've kind of been thinking of getting a couple of 35 well 35 watt equivalent LED bulbs uh, for when I uh, get back into doing airbrush painting uh, on, on metal stalks like the cameras on and just using those pointed at the canvas Um, I don't know whether uh, working with a knife, you know, seeing it on steady hands, but um, I'm not sure it actually would be particularly a problem. Um, I mean, I'm obviously not suggesting it if you're not comfortable, but I mean, the knife, um, when you're cutting wood, the knife's sort of against or in the wood, so both hands have to sort of um, shake if you like but you 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 like I'm doing here that thumb is what's actually driving the blade sort of um, it's holding my hand in a position against the wood so if even if my hand was sort of shaking the the knife doesn't really move in relation and I'm forcing this but it, it doesn't really fantastically move in relation and once once I've got pressure on the knife doesn't move at all so it might not be as bad as you think that of course is <laughs> all dependent on whether you're actually interested in working with a knife or not it's certainly uh, uh, to me you know because I, I did the um, the blade sorry the um, the chisel carving this just seemed like an interesting uh, additional um, you know, skill uh, to use a knife for carving I'm not you know I've not done a lot of it so you are seeing me learn as I go along that now that click is bad shouldn't really do that as I mentioned yesterday that's that whilst it isn't it isn't breaking the edge of the blade off it could yeah okay Fair enough, Cagliati. I would say some of it's practice, but um, you know, I know some of it would be potentially sort of uncon you know, uncontrolled, which is uh, which is fine. Still a bit chunky is this cat. <laughs> uh, 
I've got mm, shavings of wood now going all over my desk. It took me about 20 minutes to clean up last time. <laughs> Every time I um, every time I move something, I found another shaving of wood, and uh, I'm probably going to be the same again. Something like this, ideally, you need a, a clean a clean desk or somewhere where it doesn't matter. Yeah, the back's too tall as well, actually. Hmm. You can do what you enjoy doing and uh, enjoy doing it. That's the main thing. You know? And if there are, you know, uh, difficulties that stop you doing something that you want to do you either find a way around them or you do something different don't you so but hey yeah uh you know what were, were you interested in carving then for example it might be better to use Something like a, um, a, a I'm going to say something like a desktop grinder type of idea, not even a handheld tool, a desk based tool. Uh, and instead of actually carving as such, you, 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 you effectively grind the wood away because you can, you can use, you know, you can support your hands and things and, uh, and just sort of touch wood against the grinding surface um, and, and get around it that way for example so it would be kind of like rough sanding everything you get a lot of sawdust all over the place though um, but it would be kind of like rough sanding uh, a piece into shape shoulder blades are sort of yeah around there Yeah, this cat is much too tall. We'll take that down a bit. Got to be careful, I don't like that that click. Also, the grain of the wood is parallel at that point. <laughs> I'm gonna be careful if I slice into it. Um, just where the the cut will go. What you might be able to do with uh, Cagliati rather than using knives is use something that I'm just looking for where I put oh there it is and you'll put this safe because the cat was sleeping on the top would be um, something like this but potentially sort of mounted uh, desk mounted um, this is handheld but it, it, have I got the stand yeah there we go 
So, and you, you can foot, use a foot control to turn this on and off, but if it's on a stand, uh, sort of like that, for example, then you could use it, because uh, this runs quite fast, you could use it like this, for example. I mean, it, it would be better sort of fastened down onto the stand and the stand fastened down onto the desk. Uh, but a, sort of a small clamp would, would do that and a couple of rubber bands for example um, you know you could you could do it like that type of idea um, this sort of thing generally or can be uh, can have a, a foot control for speed so you can start and stop it with your feet and control the speed of it uh, and there's different bits uh, go on the end of it um, so that that's yeah, were you to be interested in, in trying to do something, that might be a way in which you can do it where you haven't got it. I mean, that's sharp, and when it's spinning, it's sharp. Uh, but it's not like pulling a knife towards you or anything like that, you know. Um, as long as you've got your hands well out the way of what you're doing, um, the worst that's likely to happen is you're going to stop, in this particular case, stop the bed. It's not powerful enough. To take this and throw it like a bigger one would be um, so that might be something let me just put that back away along with the stand um, And only one. <laughs> What's a tage? Fluffy twiggler. Uh, and I've got to turn my head sideways. That, that looks good. It looks good. I, I, I to being a lily, I like that. Um, I like that pale, almost transparent pink. It looks really good. I think it. Um, I don't know. Do you intend to do some background behind that? Because I think the pale pink and the, it might be the lighting. It might show up better in better lighting. But with the with the the lighting you've got there, that just the, the top edge, the pale pink, almost blends into the background. Indeed I do, but so's carving. <laughs> uh, you see so for the next few streams I'll be asking you what Ted you're at now <laughs> by the way I don't mind <laughs>
we go yeah just about and just have to be a little bit careful of wood grain on the back it's parallel here so um, you can sometimes end up with uh, with splitting the wood along the grain if you um, if you start cutting up you know, close to close to the angle of the grain, you're sort of getting the planes of the wood. What you do when you you're carving with chisels, so I'm assuming there's no difference with a knife. It sort of feels like that. I've cracked off a couple of pieces when I've been carving a little bit of this so I'm assuming it is going to be exactly the same yeah yeah no doubt that's quite often what I'll do with uh, with things is uh, wait till the image tells me what it wants to do which I know sounds really silly to, to a non-artist but um, it is kind of like that you get an impression of what uh, as you work on it it sort of feels right to do certain things and wrong to do others uh, I know that wants to come down further um, it's a bit stretched out so his head his neck is mm, He's going to be down. It actually probably should have been a bit longer, but huh. just it, you know, to get the right proportions. Um, normally, if a cat's got its head down on its front paws, which it kind of almost has, then you know the neck's down, um, and it wouldn't necessarily be the highest. In fact, it won't be because, of course, the ear, the tips of the ears here are going to be at sort of roughly top of head so there's quite a bit more material to come off the top of there yeah okay so I won't uh, I won't carve the back down anymore just yet take some more off the head Nope. Once somebody's banned, that's it. If they uh, if they really want to uh, be unbanned, then they can drop me a message, uh, a Twitch message, about why um, and uh, why I f they feel I should take any notice at all, since people um, who are banned are um, have been banned for a good reason. They've been you know, extremely disruptive, so I don't. Uh, I'm extremely. Uh, I'm, I'm not minded to unban people. Uh, and if you don't, if if um, if people are whispering a lot uh, for anybody, if people whisper at you a lot, if you want to stop it. Um, you can go into your settings and you, there's a setting there that uh, you can set which if you do means you don't get whispers from anybody that you haven't followed yourself and I think they have to follow you as well but I quite, can't quite recall that one birdie lover good evening welcome welcome to the studio this evening
I'm guessing there's a fair few people lurking and watching quietly uh, the stream, which is okay. I don't mind you doing that. Um, I am interested though about uh, what it is that you're interested in in watching because I suspect that a few people have, uh, are watching because of the sharp knife. Um, I'd kind of be interested to know if that's the case. It doesn't mean I'll be always doing everything with sharp knives by the way. <laughs> Um, I only work with the sharp tools like this about once every 10 weeks um, yeah so about two weeks in every 10 uh, then we work either with sort of um, scalpels or um, sharp needles <laughs> uh, Hi Laser, um, you might, you might be kidding, but I have suspect that's probably true. Uh, it? Oh, Exilian, hello there, welcome, welcome back. Yeah, there's only. Carving. I do tend to work with dangerous tools, don't I? Carving is either sharp blades, uh, sharp chisels, or sharp knives. The the pyrography is a really hot uh, tool. So I could burn myself. The um, the punch craft is a dirty great big hollow needle, which I could jab myself with. The scraper board is is kind of you know. Um, sharp nibs and, and scalpels and things like that. Um, the jewellery making is about the only less dangerous one. Trolley 99, thank you very much for the uh, copy, uh, for the uh, follow. Um, but even the jewellery one, you know, when, when a pair of pliers slips off a ring, if my finger's caught in it, it won't half hurt, I tell you that. Because I've not done it with um, jewellery making, but have, you know, snapped pliers off something and caught my finger in the jaws as they snap shut and boy does that hurt um adzi good evening <laughs> thank you very much uh, actually i'm a little warm at the moment which is why i've got a fan going but that's okay <laughs> oh now that's not fair fluffy twiglet you know it's i i take quite good care to make sure i do it safely it just looks dangerous, like this. <laughs> when I cut in this direction towards myself and towards my thumb. And uh, oh, I suppose I should uh, let you into a little bit of a secret about that as well, which is if you see me so shaking, um, as though I'm putting a lot of force into it. I'm not putting force into it. I'm putting control into it. So I'm actually trying to hold the knife back in a little bit to make sure I keep it exactly under control. So I'm not actually using a lot of force. Um, I'm using a lot of control. So what are we carving? Well, I don't know what you're carving, but I'm carving a sleeping cat. Um, which hopefully now looks a bit, a little bit more obvious. <laughs> so this is kind of junior. Ah, uh, there is, yes. Any particular reason why I should want to do that uh, fluffy twiggler? Obix, good evening. Welcome. Mm. 
You did or they did? Human like species. Must be an old one. Um, yeah, let's take that back down a little bit more. So the original inspiration, if you like, for this little bit of carving uh, as Junior, <coughs> when I just saw him sort of laid like this at the other side of the studio. So, um, I, as I've mentioned, I just quickly sort of sketched him onto the side of a a block of wood. Um, and this is a while ago now, and then started roughing it out. I just never got very, very far in doing it. So no reference pictures. I can't. Um, I can't go look at something to see if I'm doing it right. This is pure guesswork. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Okay, trolley 99, you're on probation. We shall see. Um, you should be able to talk now. Okay. Oh, I've got it spelt right, so if it's still wrong on, you, on your end, you haven't refreshed your window since last night. Because I did change it <laughs> quite quickly in the stream. Um, he says, just checking to make sure. Yeah, it does say carving. But yes, no problem. Okay, trolley 99. I think it was probably something you said after that, but I can't actually recall the conversation, so. Welcome to the stream. <laughs> you didn't get told. You, you, you fluffy twiglet, you didn't get told off. You got trolled back. Um, quite often when they're laid like this, you'll get the, the hip bone starts to show up a little bit across the top here. So I'm accidentally in some ways I've got that sort of shape coming in here so I'm just gonna be a bit careful to you know not take it away too much uh, the glove is on my left hand so um, uh, I, I can't remember I did flip the camber at some point on the last stream I can't remember exactly when because it, uh, it would have been near the end when I was showing off because I noticed when I put the picture of the Lancaster up, the writing on the bottom was the wrong way around. So I flipped it at the end of the stream. Uh, so yeah, I'm I'm right-handed. Uh, the glove is on my left hand.
So one of the things I'm doing here is is making the sort of the back of the head smaller, uh, but I'm kind of doing it and keeping it round at the same time. It's easier to do it that way than it is to sort of slice something off, and then find you haven't got enough material left to round it, um, and then you've just spoiled it. So I find it I find it easier when I was carving with chisels, and I'm applying the same sort of learning if you like is. If, if I want to round this off, but I want this smaller rounded off, then I round it off at the start and then just slice it all the way around, making it smaller. Then I don't run out of material. Hello, Zero. Hi, good evening, welcome. Uh, well, strictly speaking, Laser, you are. Since you're watching me do this, that's artsy. You're doing something artsy. I suppose if you want to take the definition a little bit further, you're writing. That's an art form. <laughs> Microsoft Paint, indeed. Actually, can you still get Microsoft Paint, isn't it? Is it Paint these days? Or something something else? Something, uh, yes, same idea, but um, doesn't it do more or something? I can't quite remember. Uh, it's a .NET application, isn't it? I think Paint something, Paint.net or something these days. Oh, you're into real art then, uh, Laser. Me, Myers. Thank you very much for following. That's kind of you. <laughs> I don't know if I'm doing if I'm doing something like that. I kind of I can listen to other things, but not actually watch them. Obviously, like I'm doing now, stop and. Stop and start and, and read something, but pay exception. <laughs> yeah, only if you are painting a picture, somebody painting a picture, painting a picture, paint, and so on. Yeah, I've kind of always wanted to, um, always wanted. Hmm, that's a bit of an exaggeration, but wanted to uh, to make one of those infinity mirrors, you know, with the lights around the side, where it just disappears into a tunnel. Slightly, only slightly related to that comment. <laughs> it's up stripper. Hello, welcome again. You know, there's uh, some of the most interesting pictures can be made from just maths equations. You know, all the factor equations, for example, you can get some really interesting pictures from things like that, and some of the. Um, Three-dimensional or, or multi-dimensional mass equations can produce some really interesting pictures. Indeed, long time no see. Well, it's welcome, uh, welcome back anyway. Uh, Birdy lover, your mind just got blown away. What by the um, paintception or the infinity mirror? <laughs> but you were you know you were hoping or you were wishing you were doing some art at the same time so you know doing some of those um, some of those equations and and plotting them out uh, would uh, would produce some really interesting things You might actually be able to hear that cross cutting on maybe the fan's a bit too loud, but this this wood gets I mean when you cross cut it like that it's got a really nice crunch to it. Uh, 
Shadow Mark Three. Good evening. You're painting on Photoshop. I've got. <coughs> uh, they may well indeed. Um, quite a few of um, things like uh, tribal images also um, look um, look great as tattoos. You're painting on Photoshop. I have Photoshop. I haven't. Um, I generally use Painter. I get on better with Painter than I do Photoshop. I have to practice a little bit more because with it because it's it's a different technique uh, and different brushes and things. But um, I just haven't yet. <laughs> you realise if you take them, you won't use them, and if you don't take them, you'll have every opportunity, uh, Fluffy to go. Fluffy twiglet, sorry. <laughs> okay, I'll bite then, uh, Lazar. Which way is it? If you like them, do you take them or do you not take them? <laughs> Starting to look a bit sort of more better. Is that sort of the, sh the angle of the head a little bit there? In terms of you know this this area here, a bit more needs to come off, I think. But Okay, uh, ASAP Stripper, let me ask you, what does it look like? <laughs> Hopefully, it's it's a little bit obvious, or mostly obvious. Uh, okay, Lazar, <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> yeah, uh, Lazar's correct. It's going to be, oh, you know, it is, it is a, um, a sleeping pussy cat. And, and he's going to be sleepy that way I don't have to do the details of his eyes he can have his eyes closed Sorry, I'm laughing. I, I'm a little warm here in the studio, as I mentioned. I've got a fan running. Uh, Mrs. Zerrigan out's wearing a coat. Um, I don't know about the Obix, as to whether um, I literally have no idea. Um, I suspect not. It's it's not well, well. I could I can use a chisel. I can use a very fine V-shaped chisel to put. A texture on it, um, but I don't know whether whether or not to actually do that because um, it will be quite difficult to make it look reasonable, and, and it won't look realistic anyway. But uh, to look reasonable, and I'm not sure uh, I want to do that. I might just you know just leave it leave it smooth and to some extent. Um, it's different, but sometimes I like wood smooth. It's just tactile. 
Uh, so if, if it's a nice shape, I don't necessarily want to put a texture on it. Uh, but I don't know. We shall see when we get that far. <laughs> okay, ASAP, yeah. Fair enough. Um, Obix, have a good evening. And uh, see you again. Um, what's the glove? Uh, okay. The, the glove, I don't know what the actual material is but uh, that it's woven it with but the there's uh, kevlar fibers wo woven into the glove quite a, quite a bit of them uh, so it's it's not wool but it's it's kind of like a probably a, a sort of a, a cotton nylon mix i suspect i can't actually remember i did choose it specifically uh, in that it would it'll be something like that so that my hand doesn't get hot but there's kevlar fibers so the sort of the black you know, I suppose it's showing up grey, but you see all the black bits. They're kind of where the Kevlar fibers just sort of expose themselves a little bit in the in the in the weave or the knit. And what that does is, uh, the Kevlar fibers resist cutting. Um, so if I'm doing that sort of thing, then it will tend to resist if I accidentally slip, or don't watch what I'm doing and sort of cutting cut across into my hand. The glove will stop that cutting into my hand literally won't stop me if I stab which is I'm not going to do but because <laughs> the, the a stab motion will go between the fibers but it it's um, it stops uh, stops cutting I could wear a chain mail glove as well that'd be another alternative that uh, uh, people who do fish filleting do uh, or fishmongers or butchers sometimes but it would tend to mar the um, the material if I did that so hence the this style 3D bloke, hey, we haven't seen or heard from you for a while. How are you doing? Um, yeah, it's fancy hand armor. Not, not whilst I've streamed this, but whilst I have been doing some hand carving, I have accidentally caught the glove about three times so far. So it saved me cutting myself. <laughs> well, when it comes to slicing my fingers apart, to layers out, I don't particularly consider it overkill. But it, it would, it, you know, I, I, I wouldn't be using aluminium rings. I'd have to use probably stainless steel um, for that sort of glove. I'd probably buy one to be honest. Um, but you know, put it, if if I squeeze like that, I would get ring marks. Uh, that's a soft glove. Oh, that's uh, good to hear, 3D. Yeah. Well, I hope you are feeling better. £80. Well, it's not hard. Oil paint. Ooh. You... I'm just trying to think whether whether you've mentioned doing oil paints before because you've used acrylics, haven't you, for, uh, for most of the stuff. So is... is... Have I misunderstood or not not known that you were doing oil? Or are you trying out trying out oil? Mind you, it says looking forward to getting into painting with those again. The again bit suggests that you have done them before, and I've got a memory like a sieve, only not as good. Um, I 
I've got to remember is the tail comes off the back here as well so I'm going to make both sides symmetrical sort of um, so this one is got a rounded this one kind of is in not rounded enough okay that um, if you feel uh, inclined to straight to stream it that'd be interesting to see um, 3d block because I've never Oils have half interested me, but I've never actually seen any done enough to um, be any more than just, you know, I'm interested enough to look, so I know it's, um, I won't say it's a completely different technique to acrylic painting, but um, it's, uh, it's not exactly the same thing, I know, or I understand anyway. Anybody that's watching, if you um, don't um, aren't aware of 3D block, there 3D block is an airbrush art. Well, is is an airbrush artist an acrylic hairy stick? That's a hairy stick. Well, that's a big hairy stick, not the sort of thing he uses, except for gesso. Um, so hairy stick uh, artist, and now we may well be seeing him do some oil as well as acrylic. So. Um, I'd certainly suggest you follow him and uh, and check him out when he, he streams. I don't know if he will be changing his schedule when he gets back into it, but um, uh, when he in the past is and if he you know feel free to drop in when you uh, what times you would be streaming. But he used to stream from 10 p.m. at night, UK time that is for a couple of hours. Uh, Smallum, don't understand, but good evening. Yeah, that's the bit, that kind of the blending bit and, and the smeary bit that looked interesting trying to, um, and the fact that you can actually sort of blend them on the canvas. Yep, oh well. So I say if you if you're interested in, in in any of those three styles of painting, airbrush, um, heavy stick, and some really nice sort of heavy stick stuff, then uh, you know, follow 3D blog. That way, when he does um, he does start again, you'll get the notification and be able to uh, to check it out and make a decision then if you like it. But I I certainly find uh, uh, find it interesting. But there again. Um, I do, um, I do do airbrush or did app airbrush art. I've not had a chance to do any for a while, and that's what got me back into doing art full stop. So, and as far as I know, 3D is the only guy on that I've seen do airbrush work or painting as opposed to model using it like a spray gun on models. Uh, airbrush work on. Uh, on Twitch, so definitely worth checking out. So there you go, and you won't even pay me for ED block. <laughs> Thank you. Um, there's quite a few people. I don't know if there's anybody else. I know, I know Fluffy Twiglet will occasionally um, stream. Um, uh, stuff so an, another one to check out um, I don't know if you want to say what uh, what sort of thing you want to or, or uh, do stream when you stream uh, fluffy um, I've actually to be honest my, as I say my memory is a bit of a sieve so I, I tend to forget what everybody does so if anybody else who streams feel free to let us know um, yeah, it sort of is and it isn't 3D. It's been, well, I've found it quiet uh, the past couple of weeks. But there again, uh, it's not at the moment. Uh, it's uh, last night and tonight, but I am using sharp knives. <laughs> and they do, sharp objects do tend to attract people to watch, I think. Uh, 
there you go so definitely yeah uh, definitely someone else to check out doing um doing artist uh, um, and gaming is uh, fluffy twiggler you been doing any more um kerbal uh, 3d block that was close I wasn't watching what I was doing um, I've been playing around with Factorio at the moment sort of or half playing with it don't know if you've come across that one if you liked building machine things in um, Minecraft then it's definitely one that, that's of interest oh Mad Max hmm I watched a few people play it a little bit it's not fantastically interesting me um, what did it remind me of when I first saw it it was kind of um, Oh, what is it? I was going to say the cartoon looking one. Um, the Pit Boys. Pit Boy. Um, I can't think of the, uh, the one now, but. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> That's unfortunate, uh, 3D. And Gavin said, which I know there's been an update to uh, Factorio since I last played it, so I don't know whether my save's going to load. <sighs> Zaragon, you're using a sharp knife. Be careful about it. Watch what you're doing. Fallout, that's the one. Thank you very much. I thought there was, I thought there was one out. Or was it just, um, is it like Fallout Three and a and a bit type of DLC? That's unfortunate, Laser. There is the option of um, YouTube, so you can still stream, sort of, just not in real time. Again, stop being silly. You know how to carve do it right what I'm going to do here is make a little bit of space in the side here it, obviously it's not flat to carve the um, this rear leg I guess is, is what it is uh, I'll need to do the same on the other side as well make the space to carve that to at least round it off I've got a big clearing up job to do tonight. <laughs> I make a bet. Mm. You um, 
I mean, technically, that is enough to do some streaming with um, layers. It depends what you want to stream, though. I mean, if you did a, um, I don't know, small resolution size, like about 600, you might get 720, and you're not doing something really movement intensive. I mean, like, this isn't particularly movement intensive. Um, I'm zoomed in. If I zoomed out a bit further, I'd, low, I, I'd potentially lower my bandwidth requirements. Um, you, 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 know, you might get away with it. I wouldn't be, you know, I wouldn't be streaming Fallout or, um, you know, Mad Max at that rate. But yeah. It, it's all about you know picking what you what you stream and and optimizing it. I mean, I'm lucky that I don't need to to bother um, in terms of bandwidth as to what I could do, but I have to think about what you guys can receive because I'm not partnered, so I don't get unless I'm lucky. Uh, a transcode so um, I've got to sort of think about you know there's people who might want to watch on things like I old iPads or mobile phones or things like that so um, that's kind of why I'm down at uh, one and a half megabits um, and a 720 screen rather than an HD screen It depends on the game as well. Um, what well, eats the band? A static picture takes. Well, and I, I know OBS pads it out, but a static picture basically has next to no bandwidth requirement. Uh, the more movement there is, the more colours or the more pixels. Well, let's say the more pixels, um, the more bandwidth you take. So if you if you optimise it, you know, you play a game. Potentially you could even play something like Minecraft because as long as you don't start spinning around a lot it's a relatively static image um, games like Factorio for, that's just one that comes to mind which again is a relatively static image um, you know some things like that you could probably get away with yeah Still a bit, still, uh, still dotting around, so I've just started to shape the side off a little bit there, as you can see. Bring it in a little bit, round it, round it off, um, especially round it off underneath. Because so, even even when the cats look, well, the, it's relatively stretched out, so even when they lay down, they do tend, you do still see, tend to see the. Um, uh, the rounding of uh, across to their uh, underneath of their tummy, provided of course they've not got too long hair. If you've got too long hair, then it just bushes out, and you don't really see that. But I'm taking artistic license anyway, so I'm putting it in. Um, yeah, which still means I've got to bring that top down 
probably quite a bit. It's it's a it's it's still quite a tall. The, you know the back's still quite tall in relation to the length. Um, this is it's got two names in in Europe. It's called European Lime. In America, it's called Basswood. Um, it tends to get called Basswood in the UK as well. Um, but it's its proper name is um, European Lime. It's a really nice wood for carving. The grain structure is very nice and, and fine, despite the fact that you can see rings there. Uh, the actual grain structure is really nice and fine. It, it cuts well with a blade. Um, the rings and the bit between the rings is about the same density. Um, so you don't get sort of variations um, in it when you are carving uh, on some woods the stuff between the rings cuts a lot easier um, than the rings themselves so it ends up with peaks and valleys if you're not careful and it will hold fine detail as well um, which is one of the good things about it Not that I'm that good at fine detail just yet. Yes, it is. It's it's quite it's quite a soft wood from that perspective as well. You know, I am. Uh, if you watch YouTube videos of uh, of people carving with this who are sort of are really practiced with knives. You can see him taking great big chunks out. Um, it cuts quite well. Um, this is surface hardened a little bit. In the dark areas are surface hardened, but um, it doesn't take much to just slice that off. And then you're into a slightly softer wood underneath. The wood kind of oxidizes a little bit, so that's why it goes darker. Um, that's to do with both the UV light and, and sort of oxygen. Um, and it, it sort of forms a slightly hard surface. But I certainly enjoy working with it. Um, the first carving I did on stream, I did on a piece of ash board. And kind of wished I hadn't. <laughs> I'd never used ash before, but it's hard. It's really hard to carve. Um, well, it's nice to carve, but you kind of need um, long chisels with a mallet to, to carve it. Hand carving it was really hard work. So it was an extremely shallow carved uh, carved piece. Was that one? That's the rose, if you uh, ever recall seeing it. Um, I'm, there's all sorts of knives, by the way, that can be used for carving. I'm just using a roughing knife here. Um, so it's a wide blade for strength, um, particularly uh, flat. Um, you get uh, you can get detailed knives, which are generally shorter, uh, with a finer point, for example. Um, so they're intended not to take off as much wood. You get all sorts of other shape, curved shapes. You know, curved in both directions, inward and outwards. You can get spoon shaped knives. So they're actually if you imagine the look at the looking at the blade like that, it's spoon shaped like that. So it comes out and round. And you you cut like that. So that's good for things like hollowing out spoons, bowls, uh, trays, that sort of thing. You can use knives for that. Because a flat knife like this, trying to get in, you, you can go a little bit of distance, like here. I can get in a little bit, but I can't actually get in much more than that without actually creating a crease. Um, so the curved blades let you get really into uh, to things like that. And um, you know, there are as many variations of uh, knives like, like this as, as you want, basically. As there are people to buy them, I guess. Some of them are potentially gimmicks you know they, they look interesting if you try and use one and some are genuinely useful but um, uh, the trouble is you don't often know until you try one 
and then it depends on your style of carving as well as to what's uh, what's good knives and what's what's not for you But certainly for beginner carvers, this wood is uh, is an excellent wood for that. Um, is, is this? It's as I say because of that that softness, but the ability to take quite a bit of detail and uh, uh, to be uh, uh, slightly more forgiving of things like um, grain direction. Uh, some woods, if you um, if I was cutting this and the grain disappeared down there and I cut in this direction I would end up just breaking that piece off um, uh, the basswood tends to be a little bit more forgiving I can go so far and it gets a bit hard to cut and then provided you stop at that point and realize what you're trying to do then um, you can uh, not damage the thing that you're working on if you don't stop what you're doing then you break it off but you know so it, it can be useful for beginners like that. Have you done some carving um, free? As I'm guessing, I mean, ash isn't a common sort of wood used in many households. So um, people who know about it do tend to have a reason for knowing. wondering what this bit here of course is for is his front paw so I'm leaving enough um, enough spare there for uh, for me to be able to carve that as well at this stage I'm not doing any carving on it because I'm as you see I'm carving down so I'm leaving little cut marks in the top so I want a little bit of space once I've created this and left enough Paw mark, uh, paw sp uh, material there. I can then carve those uh, slices off the top and end up with a smoothish looking paw. <laughs> okay. Well, I imagine if you, you know, imagine if you're using sort of big sculptures, so you're using the big chisels, the, the mallet-based chisels, it won't be so bad because you can use the force of the mallet, of course, rather than just trying to drive it with your, with your fingers as, um, uh, as you do when you're carving uh, with, with hand tools. Not that there's any particular reason why I couldn't um, go out and buy a mallet. Um, I need to change the handle I use on the hand tools, but I could do that. Um, they do, uh, they do make uh, mallet-based uh, heads for uh, for the for those t uh, flex cut chisels that I use. Just be kind of a bit noisy to do that here in the studio with uh, <laughs> with a big mallet. Oops, there is it. It's going away from me. I'm trying to get in a particular space around here, but I haven't got a lot of um, you know, room to to support both a knife and an act as an end stop because I'm using using that like that as the end stop. Well, as I come up here, as you can see, my my end stop goes away, so I have to be a lot more careful. And I haven't got uh, a position I can get into here with. In fact, ideally, I should switch to the detail knife to do that, um, so that I've got I've got the end stop for safety.
Yes, that's as I should. <laughs> Again, see, it's, uh, calculating the risk here. Um, I'm using. I'm not. Uh, I'm not using force to do this. I'm curling my fingers. If you watch, you can see my fingers just curling. So, as long as I'm sticking with that movement, I'm less likely to slice my thumb. Yeah, I kind of would love to be able to do something like that 3D. You know, take some sort of architectural element. Like that and, and do it, but um, hmm. need a lot more practice before I'd attempt something like that. Okay, well. Starting to get a head shake, that's looking reasonable. Come along, wood. Okay. As you saw that there, that got quite hard for me to cut. I could have kept applying pressure. And that's when, if it slips, that's when you hurt yourself. I back off and slice it gently. As I was doing, um, and uh, I've got through it without uh, without the risk of um, slicing my thumb. Incidentally, I could use um, a glove on my right hand. There's nothing to stop me from doing that. I don't find it particularly comfortable or particularly secure hold on the knife when I do that is why I don't. Um, everybody's different of course and uh, I mean potentially the other thing I could do is do something like, um, although you can buy them, but effectively cut the finger off of a glove. I'd probably have to sew up the end to stop it unravelling but then I could just put that on a thumb for example just to stop that slice but um, I haven't done that yet. Uh, it's difficult. Back off and just uh, relax and do it from a slightly different angle. Use a slicing motion more than a, a shaving motion. It's time to shape the head a little bit more now into a slightly more cat faced shape. Um, they used to get that from the linseed, though, didn't they? That and, and the fact that um, they'd, they'd use the, the hands to mix the paint. It takes a bit of getting used to wearing latex gloves. I, I I sometimes use them with airbrushing. Um, actually, it makes holding on to the trigger quite pulling the trigger quite a bit easier. <laughs> but um, I tend to I tend to wear the gloves when I'm blasting paint a bit more so that because of the obviously the bounce back. But oh, you're actually using it's oil paint, isn't it? Ah uh, dear. <laughs> I'll pay. Use his linseed as the sol well as the carrier. Because it uses the sol it is actually the solvent, isn't it? But uh, Yeah. One one bit of my brain doesn't know what the other's thinking.
let's take that neck down a little bit further something else by the way when you're uh, doing this sort of thing you don't necessarily have to move the knife you can move the wood instead as which is what I was mainly doing just then sometimes it's a bit easier to do it that way Literally, it's the relative movement between the wood and the knife that does the cutting, so it doesn't really matter which one moves. Um, just sometimes it's a little bit safer to do it with uh, one type of movement than the other. developing a slight sort of crease there uh, to get rid of that I really need to use a detail knife but I'm not really bothered about it at the moment we've got a bit bit more roughing to do so we can deal with that later oh yeah the turf um, do you have to use turf? Uh, well I suppose that's better, isn't it, than white spirit? <laughs> yeah. yeah, just as long as you don't have lots of funny lights and um, fans going all the time. It, um, 3D block. Otherwise, you might have some funny men watching you. Well, I've just reached there. Is a stage where I've rounded that off. There's no flat now, on just on that side of the head, which the you know flat like this, the side of the wood. I've now carved that off, so that's now fully rounded around there. Well, yeah, rounded, rounded in lots of little straight cuts, but it's rounded. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's a good idea. Stick to stuff that's known to work and then you can vary it afterwards. Yeah. Know what it's supposed to do and then uh, and then you know whether whatever you try next is, is right or not. It's kind of... Um, I know you've you've discussed it with airbrushes before, and I kind of I've done with things like chisels. It's a, it's a similar idea to um, to you know with things like uh, airbrushes and and you know, knives and chisels. It's not to skimp on things. Get you know not not to well, skimp's the wrong word. Not to go ultra cheap. If something's really cheap. It's not a good idea. Get something that is kind of known to work. Um, that way you can tell whether if you're having a problem whether you know, you've got confidence in knowing that the problem isn't the tool you might be using the wrong tool but it's confidence the tool is okay whatever it is and 
either it's lack of skill or something else is wrong uh, if you get sort of cheap tools or alternatives and substitutes and if you not don't know what you're doing then if you come across a problem you've no idea what it is <laughs> um, whether it's lack of skill whether it's a, a problem whether it's the tool just isn't good enough or can't do whatever it does so uh, um, sometimes um, you just have to uh, save up and uh, and get the good stuff a default guy good evening welcome to the studio this evening <laughs> yeah that's probably a good idea that way at least you'll get some respite from it when you uh, you know go have your tea or something like that uh, well we're all doing fine I see you matey how are you doing bit odd I thought you'd have known for yourself what you how you are doing but if you want us to tell you well we'll just guess oh I know that's not yeah you know what you're doing but yeah I misread your comment just then but yes it's uh, yeah quality a reasonable quality paint and you know it's uh, it's not the paint I wouldn't necessarily say it's lack of skill because I think you have lack of skill uh, you don't have lack of skill but um, you know it's uh, not quite the right technique or something like that then yeah oh yes you um, you were saving petrol if I remember correctly I think I'd rather have the time to do something else <laughs> than just sit around. Um, mind you, I do have the advantage on the uh, on the mobile that I've got unlimited data, so I can uh, I can always just sit and watch a video. I occasionally take uh, Mrs. Evergan out to things and just drop her off, and um, I. I these days I tend to come back so I can do some stuff in the studio or, or whatever but um, uh, I quite enjoy reading so I, I will often just take a book and sit in a car park somewhere while she enjoys whatever event it is that she's gone to. Oh, uh, that kind of reminds me that what the way of uh, uh, supermarkets AD, where, uh, sorry, for ED block, where they, you know, um, buy six tooth, uh, tubes of toothpaste and get one free. And it's kind of like, fine, but by the time I've got round to that, it's probably going to be so far out of date, I won't want to use it. <laughs> Hello, creams, welcome. Uh, I am cutting it like I mean it. This thing is sharp. <laughs> I make every cut one that I mean to go. I'd be rather silly if I didn't. I don't have um, enough of a skill level to take great big chunks out. So I have to do it in, in a little bit more steady manner. I am amassing a, a decently small pile of, uh, of shavings on the desk. I mean, if you like, I can start cutting it this way. Make a make a few people cringe. Mm. 
and this blade actually could do with a little bit of a honing. We'll do that shortly. It's lost its uh, it's it's lost its really sharp edge at the moment. <laughs> what you making? Come on, creams. I'm sure your pattern recognition isn't that bad. Yeah, it, it, we didn't. How you're supposed to keep uh, keep paint in the fridge? Um, oil paint in the fridge. I guess that's to stop. Well, I don't know. Glad to say, I suppose that's to stop the linseed from uh, from evaporating. But mm, I don't know. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> a puddy tat. A puddy tat. A sleeping puddy tat. This is um, loosely based on Junior, which at the time when I started this several months ago. Um, he was sort of in that pose just at the other side of the studio and I quickly sketched him onto a little block of wood and started cutting. Um, so I'm just trying to sort of, well I keep hopping around at the moment, I'm just sort of doing some work on the head. The heads and you know this area is just too big and not quite, it's almost getting to the right sort of shape around here. Uh, but it's certainly still a bit too high on the top. Okay, Fluffy to Twiglet, have a good evening, have a good weekend, and if you do any painting, enjoy yourself. Interesting you should mention that. How do you like Ruth? <laughs> that was the last piece we carved on stream. Uh, it took about four and a half weeks to do. Um, and I must admit, by the time I finished it, I was feeling a little bit, I've had enough. <laughs> but it's it's a deep relief carving, so um, yeah, it's, it's, it's not actually stood off the uh, wood, but he's, he's undercut enough to, uh, to look like he's stood off the wood. Uh, no, I haven't. It's, it's kind of interesting because you've got you've got the picture of the you got the the thing of the dragon there and you've got some dragon scale uh, uh, ring weaving here and uh, 
one of the things I'm kind of uh, wanting to do is that that dragon that I've carved. I kind of wanted to uh, want to do an airbrush version, not not of that pose, but of a dragon, the same Anne McCaffrey dragons. Um, I did try one when I first started uh, airbrushing, and I did it on sort of some thick wallpaper. Uh, wasn't fantastically good because uh, I had no idea what I was doing. In fact, it wasn't very good at all. But um, you know, that's uh, that sort of uh, one of the first images I tried <laughs> with airbrushing was uh, was a uh, an Anne McCaffrey dragon in flight. Uh, Say so it didn't look much at all, but. Uh, Oh yeah, oh, in, in oil, that should be interesting. That's a fairly reasonable connect, uh, collection uh, creams. Uh, Frix, thank you very much. That's, uh, that's kind of you to say that. Yeah, my wife's got a few uh, dragons which resemble some of those should I say um, uh, I'm just trying to think one of those the, the purple one at the left reminds me of um, computer game whose name I'm trying to f remember just now on the way um, I can't oh bother I've forgotten the name but my, my wife uh, likes purple dragons because of um, she started liking them with uh, it, when Florida, when we went to Disney World in Florida, and they had a ride there called Imagination, um, and uh, there was a purple dragon in it, and she's liked dragons ever since, and uh, I sort of collected them. But I'm now trying to think of the name of this game. Oh, oh thank you, Cre uh, Creams. Yes, Spyro. Spyro, the purple little. He's purple, isn't he? Yeah. It kind of it kind of reminded me a bit like him. <laughs> I like friendly dragons though, um, which is why I like the Anne McCaffrey ones. I, um, I suspect you you may have come across them, um, or rather, they are generally friendly. I suppose they can be extremely fierce things when they're breathing fire, but not the sort of thing you uh, you mess with. But. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> uh, those sorts of things are too warm for me. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. the Anne McCaffrey books this one's called Ruth he's a white he is a white dragon um, so uh, he's unique this is this is actually based off a picture that was painted by oh I'm a, one of my McCaffrey, well Anne McCaffrey's favorite illustrator whose name has escaped me for the moment um, and he, he his illustration of the dragons is uh, the style of them is one that I really like. So this is based off one of his pictures uh, of a dragon which is white, and therefore we know who it is. It's Ruth because he's the only one. Yeah, yeah it would be <laughs> creams. It would be. Uh, yeah, so. It's specifically carved quite 
sort of undercarved quite uh, quite a much uh, quite a bit to create that uh, that shadow effect. So you can look at it from quite a quite an angle, and it still looks like it's um, uh, you, you know it's in mid air, shall we say? Hmm. decided not to apply pyrography to it uh, 3d um, I did think about doing it but I kind of like the um, the wood in sudden that fairly natural the sides in a little bit so that I've got room here then to uh, to carve the, the rear feet ah, okay not someone I've particularly come across but I, I am really sort of Looked, uh, uh, looked for them a lot, uh, creams. I shall have a look. Not just at the moment, but I shall have a look. Right, can I give this knife a polish up? I will drop. Have a strop with a knife. So I'm not strictly going to be sharpening this knife. It will come out sharper. But I'm not actually sharpening it. It's more, okay. it's, it's more akin to polishing it or straightening out the edge, which has got a little bit bent. Uh, this is all I'm doing here, putting some polishing compound onto this piece of leather. Which is glued to a um, a block of wood. It does two things actually. Doing that, it takes off the black that you can see there. Um, is both mixed uh, polish, but is also metal. Um, any sort of polishing uh, removes metal from what it is that you're polishing. So, it, and it goes onto the strop. I just knock that off. Oh, you're all right, Creams. I'm sure people can get words in edgeways, and I'm getting used to, ho to holding about four conversations at the same time. So what I'm going to do now, really, is just drag the knife, held at the right angle, down the strop, and then reverse it and come back. A knife cut because the edge is both really fine and really rough at the same time. Um, but it has to be straight to do that. When you're using these, the, the edge, which is really, really fine, tends to bend over. And when it bends over, you kind of, you're trying to cut by pushing against here, which isn't fantastically good. So what the stropping does is just strain it out. And it doesn't need much. That probably is enough. I shall just try a little. Yep. Just like it is with the chisels, you you get an immediate. You know, if you do it right, and it's not that hard, you get an immediate effect as to just how easily it is to cut uh, when you were st struggling uh, only moments before. And I'm cutting that side at the wrong. There we go. Right. Um, unfortunately, though, guys and girls and people and internets and everything else, um, we're ten o'clock. I've been streaming for two hours, and that's about uh, about it. Ten o'clock. Got to get all ready, uh, clean up, which will take me a little while. I've got Hoover today, though, so hopefully it'll be a bit quicker, and then go to bed. 
uh, for work tomorrow. So we're going to leave it there with a with a sharp knife and a pussy cat that's starting to uh, to be roughed out quite nicely. I'm going to say uh, thank you everybody for uh, for watching this evening. It has been uh, fun. Layers, of, yeah, well. Uh, for me, it's ten o'clock at night, so you know you might as well give up and go at that uh, at that point. Um, sorry. Uh, actually, I think Fluffy Twiglet probably wants them to um, to make paper with three uh, D block. So, but otherwise, yeah. What well, I spent two hours creating them, so what would they be worth? <laughs> Uh, time and materials cost yeah so thank you everybody for watching those that followed uh, tonight as well thank you very much for doing that if you're still around um, if there's anybody that's watching that isn't following I do of course encourage you to do so that way Twitch will let you know when I go live again um, but if you don't want to that's okay if you like the notification though you can follow me on Twitter because the tweet goes out when I go live. It's at Zaragonart. Um, the details for that are, of course, below the stream window, but they'll also be on the end plate in a moment, just in case you forget already, just like I would. Uh, if you'd just like to catch me on my next stream, which will be tomorrow night, I stream seven nights a week from 8pm in the UK. 1900 hours uh, UTC, to give it its correct name. Um, oh, two hours ago, it was eight o'clock. So you can do a bit of mass, just like Leia's has been doing. Uh, so, thank you all. I hope I'll see you on the, in the studio tomorrow. Have a good night. Bye-bye.